Another issue we're going to talk about is artificial intelligence. And for that, my question is to Timnit Gebru. She's an expert on the issue. Artificial intelligence is being used uh, for surveillance of journalist movements, trolling of journalists, especially women. It's been used to attack uh, minority groups, women among others. So my question to you is, what is the impact of artificial intelligence on freedom of expression? Thank you um, for this question. I, um, I'm seeing the intersection of so many things um, in this in this issue that we're talking about um, and hearing the experiences of um, all these journalists, some of whom I'm actually collaborating with. Um, so there is the intersection of racism, colonialism, um, and as Karen Howe, who used to be a reporter at the MIT Tech Review, has this series um, called um, AI Colonialism. Um, and of course, as Shoshana Zuboff, uh, you know, uh, book discusses surveillance capitalism. So there is all of this intersection with um, AI that, you know, or our uh, right now specifically deep learning methods that are require lots and lots of data uh, to that are labeled often by people who are uh, completely exploited, have absolutely no rights. So there was just an article recently about content moderators um, who um, indirectly work for Facebook in Kenya um, and how they were exploited and, and barely paid. I'm talking about less than $5,000 a year. And so it's, it's like a reincarnation of colonialism in my, in my ex um in my opinion. And there is a lot more that hasn't been said um, on that end. There is this ideology, uh, almost like a religious ideology that is very popular among all of the billionaires right now, including Elon Musk, etc., called long-termism, uh, where it's all about artificial general intelligence and how we should maximize future human potentials. Um, and at the cost of current human potential, if you really read up on it, it's, it's to me a reincarnation of modern day eugenics. So it, there is a lot <laughs> uh, uh, happening here um, at the intersection of AI, racism, coloni colonization, and uh, what we're talking about in terms of, um, of, of journalism under attack to me is under that. So for instance, um, when I was at Google, you know, I also happened to be born and raised in Ethiopia, and I'm of Eritrean descent. And Eritrea is um, the world's most censored country, um, the lowest internet, internet penetration rate. Um, and in Ethiopia, there is a genocide under, um, in Tigray right now where over 500,000 people have died. So on the one hand, we have that the media has not has really not covered this, you know, something that should be front page of every news. On the other hand, we have people who are using social media to raise awareness. But then we also have this transnational repression uh, that is going on where where um, this kind of uh, people dictators have, you know, uh, thrown their tentacles across nations and a lot of journalists have uh, kind of you know are, are self-censoring so my colleague calls this mute news so one of my colleagues that I hired at Google uh, at the very end right before I got fired is Moroccan and he's actually um, uh, somebody who is a victim of this transnational repression um, and his friends who are journalists like Omar Radi were one of the first people to uh, be victims of the Pegasus spyware, etc. So what I'm saying is all of us AI researchers, many of us are at the intersections of these things and we've been trying to raise the alarm. And when we raise the alarm, we get retaliated against, right? So collective action um, is key. In terms of, um, so um, AI specifically, the intersection of the scale that everybody wants to have. So in social media networks, for instance, you have all of these people that are unpaid laborers, right? Doing the kind of the labeling of raising the alarm of misinformation, et cetera, who are unpaid, they're not making money. And so if we had a situation where the data laborers behind all of these systems, whether it's social media networks or other forms of quote unquote AI, then these companies wouldn't rush to adopt all of these systems, um, you know, because it wouldn't make sense in market-wise to scale because you're paying 
the appropriate amount to these data um, people who are actually um, powering these quote unquote automated systems because they're not truly automated. There's a whole army of people who are uh, not being compensated for who are labeling this data. Um, so that's kind of my, um, what I would say, at the, which is at the heart of it. And um, as um, I've been raising the alarm about a new crop of um, uh, models called large language models that actually uh, generate language and they can generate it at uh, generate certain kinds of text. They can generate it at scale. They can sound super coherent. So now you can start to see even more of this um, extremist ideology or misinformation that is coupled with social media platforms and that is kind of um, uh, proliferated everywhere. And just like deep fakes, so deep fakes are um, images or videos or audio that can be generated and we see on social media, a lot of people uh, with um, social media um, accounts with faces that are generated, fake faces that are generated with deep fakes um, that then harass, assume certain kinds of personalities and harass journalists and others, I've been harassed too. Um, and so you can see, imagine this, this language that's generated in conjunction with this um, <laughs> fake images and audio that are generally being proliferated. But at the same time, a lot of experts on misinformation talk about even if you don't see a lot of these fake generated um, texts, just the notion, the fact that they exist can be a really big problem because people can say everything is fake when they want to suppress dissent, right? So that's also the other issue. So for me, um, this is at the intersection of the colonial, the new colonial order that AI is creating. So I really highly suggest reading Karen Howe's um, a series on that. The labor practices that are so exploitative that come with this extractive colonial order um, because the data laborers are not getting paid. And if they were, all of these companies would not rush to adopt these techniques. So I, I, I'll stop there. <laughs>